Hey kids, welcome back to Story Stop. It's great to see you and I hope you had a fantastic week. I've got my favorite story for you today. It's a little long, but I hope it's not too long for you to enjoy. But first, a big shout out to my awesome grandchildren, Ocean, hey Ocean, and Sage, and Alicia. How are you all doing? I hope you're doing well. I hope you all are doing well. It's been a great week for me and I hope it's been a great week for you. Well, I want to get on with this story. It's called The Lorax and it's written and illustrated by Dr. Seuss. This is my absolute favorite story of all time and I really wanted to share it with you. At the far end of town where the grickle grass grows and the wind smells slow and sour when it blows and no birds ever sing, excepting old crows, is the street of the lifted Lorax. It's so dark there, isn't it? And deep in the grickle grass, some people say, if you look deep enough, you can still see today where the Lorax once stood, just as long as it could before somebody lifted the Lorax away. What was the Lorax and why was it there? And why was it lifted and taken somewhere from the far end of town where the grickle grass grows? The old Wunzler still lives here. Ask him, he knows. You won't see the Wunzler. Don't knock at his door. He stays in his lurkin' on top of his store. He lurks in his lurkin', cold under the roof, where he makes his own clothes out of myth muffered moof. And on special dank midnights in August, he peeks out of the shutters, and sometimes he speaks and tells how the Lorax was lifted away. He'll tell you, perhaps, if you're willing to pay. On the end of a rope, he lets down a tin pail, and you have to toss in 15 cents and a nail and the shell of a great, great, great grandfather's snail. Then he pulls up the pail, makes a most careful count to see if you paid him the proper amount. Then he hides what you paid him away in his snug, his secret strange hole in his grubulous glove. Then he grunts, I will call you by whisper, my phone, for the secrets I tell are for your ears alone. Slup, down slups the whisper, my phone, to your ear and the old Wunstler's whispers are not very clear since they have to come down through a snurgly hose, and he sounds as if he had smallish bees up his nose. Now I'll tell you, he says, with his teeth sounding gray, how the Lorax got lifted and taken away. It started way back, such a long, long time back. Way back in the days where the grass was still green and the pond was still wet and the clouds were still clean and the song of the swami swans rang into space. And one morning I came to this glorious place and I first saw the trees, the truffula trees, the bright colored tufts of the truffula trees, mile after mile in the fresh morning breeze. Look at those trees, they're all different colors. That's what the Wunzler was admiring. And under the trees, I saw brown barbaloots frisking around in their barbaloot suits as they played in the shade and ate truffula fruits. From the ripulous pond came the comfortable sound of the humming fish humming while splashing around.
But those trees, those trees, those truffula trees, all my life I've been searching for trees such as these. The touch of their tufts was much softer than silk, and they had the sweet smell of fresh butterfly milk. I felt a great leaping of joy in my heart. I knew just what I'd do. I unloaded my cart. I wonder what he's gonna do. He seems to really like those trees. In no time at all, I had built a small shop. Then I chopped down a truffula tree with one chop. And with great skillful skill and with great speedy speed, I took the soft tuft and I knitted a sneed. Look what he did. He chopped down the tree and he knitted, he made this thing out of the truffula tuft. Hmm. That doesn't seem so bad, does it? The instant I finished, I heard a gazump. I looked. I saw something pop out of the stump of the tree I chopped down. It was sort of a man. Describe him, it's hard. I don't know if I can. He was shortish and oldish and brownish and mossy, and he spoke with a voice that was sharpish and bossy. Who do you think that is? Who do you think that is? Mister, he said with a sawdusty sneeze, I am the Lorax, I speak for the trees, I speak for the trees, for the trees have no tongues. And I'm asking you, sir, at the top of my lungs, he was very upset as he shouted and puffed, what's that thing you've made out of my truffula truffed? I see where this is going. Look, Lorax, I said, there's no cause for alarm. I chopped just one tree. I am doing no harm. I'm being quite useful. This thing is a thneed. A thneed's a find something that all people need. It's a shirt, it's a sock, it's a glove, it's a hat. But it has other uses, yes, far beyond that. You can use it for carpets, for pillows, for sheets, or curtains, or covers for bicycle seats. The Lorax said, sir, you are crazy with greed. There's no one on earth who would buy that fool for need. The onceler thinks that just chopping down one tree is okay. But let's see what happens next. But the very next minute I proved he was wrong. For just at that minute, a chap came along and he thought that the thneed I had knitted was great. He happily bought it for $3.98. I laughed at the Lorax, you poor guy. You never can tell what some people will buy. I repeat, cried the Lorax, I speak for the trees. I'm busy, I told him. Be quiet if you please. I rushed across the room and in no time at all, built a radio phone. I put in a quick call. I called all my brothers and uncles and aunts and I said, listen here, here's a wonderful chance for the whole Onceler family to get mighty rich. Get over here fast, take the road to North Niche. Turn left at Weehawken, sharp right at South Stitch. Why do you suppose he needs all these people to come over to where he lives? <coughs> and in no time at all, he said, in a factory I built, the whole Onceler family was working full tilt. We were all knitting sneeze, just as busy as bees to the sound of the chopping of truffula trees. <gasps> look at all the trees he's already chopped down and it doesn't look like he's gonna stop. Then, oh baby, oh, how my business did grow. Now chopping one tree at a time was too slow. So I invented my super ax hacker, which whacked off four truffula trees at one smacker. We were making needs four times as fast as before. And that Lorax, he didn't show up anymore. Look at that super ax hacker, chopping down all those trees at one time. But the next week he knocked on my new office door. He snapped, I'm the Lorax who speaks for the trees which you seem to be chopping as fast as you please. 
but I'm also in charge of the brown barbaloos who played in the shade in their barbaloos suits and happily lived eating trucula fruits. Now, thanks to your hacking my trees to the ground, there's not enough trucula fruit to go round and my poor barbaloos are all getting the crummies because they have gas and no food in their tummies. Oh, look at the brown barbaloos, they're so sick. They loved living here, but I can't let them stay. They'll have to find food, and I hope that they may. Good luck, boys, he cried, and he sent them away. I, the Wunzler, felt sad as I watched them all go. But business is business, and business must grow, regardless of crummies and tummies, you know. Doesn't he seem selfish? I meant no harm, I most truly did not, but I had to grow bigger, so bigger I got. I biggered my factory, I biggered my roads, I biggered my wagons, I biggered the loads of the thneeds I shipped out. I was shipping them forth to the south, to the east, to the west, to the north. I went right on biggering, selling more thneeds, and I biggered my money, which everyone needs. Then again he came back. I was fixing some pipes when that old nuisance Lorax came back with more gripes. I am the Lorax, <coughs> he coughed and he whiffed. <coughs> and shoo! He sneezed and he sniffled, he snarkled, he sniffed. One slur, he cried with a gruffulous croak. One slur, you're making such smogulous smoke, my poor swami swans. They can't sing a note. <coughs> no one can sing who has smog in his throat. Look at the sky. Look how black and gray and blue, dark blue it's looking. It's not looking a healthy, light blue with white puffy clouds. Look at all that smoke. Look at those dark clouds of smoke coming out of the chimney. Can you see that? That can't be good. Poor Swami Swans. And so said the Lorax. <coughs> Please pardon my cough. They cannot live here. So I'm sending them off. Where will they go? I don't hopefully know. They may have to fly for a month or a year to escape from the smog you smogged up around here. Too many trees left are there. What's more, snapped the Lorax, his dander was up. Let me say a few more words about gluppity glup. Your machinery chugs on day and night without stop making gluppity glup. Also schloppity schlop. And what do you do with this leftover goo? I'll show you, you dirty old Wunzler man, you. Look at all the schloppity schlop. Yuck. You're glumping the pond where the humming fish hummed. No more can they hum, for their gills are all gummed. So I'm sending them off. All oh, their futures are dreary. They'll walk on their fins and get woefully weary in search of some water that isn't so smeary. Look at the air. Oh my. Look at the pond, look how muddy it is with floppity flop and schluppity schlup. And then I got mad, I got terribly mad. I yelled at the Lorax, now listen here, Dad. All you do is yap, yap and say bad, 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 bad. Well, I have my rights, sir, and I'm telling you, I intend to go on doing just what I do. And for your information, you Lorax, I'm figuring on biggering and biggering and biggering, and biggering, until turning more truculent trees into thneeds. <coughs> <coughs> which everyone, everyone, everyone needs. I think I'm getting schloppity schlop and gluppity glup in my throat. I'm starting to cough like the Lorax.
think I skipped a page. And at that very moment, we heard a loud whack. From outside in the fields came a sickening smack of an ax on a tree. Then we heard the tree fall. The very last truffula tree of them all. Look, that's it, just tree stumps, no more trees. No more trees, no more sneeze, no more work to be done. So in time, my uncles and aunts, everyone all waved me goodbye. They jumped into my cars and drove away under the smoke smothered stars. Now all that's left me the bad smelling sky was my empty factory, the Lorax and I. said nothing, just gave me a glance, just a, gave me a very sad, sad backward glance as he lifted himself by the seat of his pants. And I'll never forget the grim look on his face when he heisted himself and took leave of this place through a hole in the smog without leaving a trace. There he goes. He got out of the smog. He's going to where the clean skies are. And all that the Lorax left here in this mess was a small pile of rocks with the one word, unless. Whatever that meant, well, I just couldn't guess. That was long, long ago. But each day since that day, I've sat here and worried and worried away. Through the years, while all my buildings have fallen apart, I've worried about it with all my heart. Unless. But now, said the one slur, now that you're here, the word of the Lorax seems perfectly clear. Unless someone like you cares a whole awful lot, nothing is going to get better. It's not. So, catch, calls the onceler. He lets something fall. It's a truffula seed. It's the last one of all. You're in charge of the last of the truffula seeds. And truffula trees are what everyone needs. Plant a new truffula, treat it with care. Give it clean water and feed it fresh air. Grow a forest, protect it from axes that hack. Then the Lorax and all his friends may come back. That was the Lorax. That's a very important book to me because it talks about the importance of clean air and clean water and clean land and fresh, beautiful trees. It's very important that we take care of these things in the world because the more that we get rid of plants and trees, the harder it's going to be for us to breathe. Did you know that trees and plants help us breathe? They do. They send out oxygen and we breathe in oxygen. So we need trees, we need plants, we need clean air or everything is going to get sick, just like all those animals got sick in this story. So it's really important that we appreciate the beautiful nature around us. And I know that you do. That's our story for the week. And I hope you enjoy it. Ho hope you enjoyed it. I know it was a little long, but I just really wanted to share it with you. So I'm gonna say goodbye for this week and say that I hope to see you again next week. Have a great and fantastic week. Have fun, do lots of fun things, and come back next week. Goodbye, Ocean. Goodbye, Sage. Goodbye, Alicia. 
bye everyone.